2003, I get a phone call from my father. Now, my mother and father, I was raised in rural Arkansas. My mother and father are living in the home that my mother was born in. That's my mother right there. You can see the resemblance, right? Right here. Turned gray in my 20s. So, you know, I've been dealing with this for a long time. I get a call from my dad, and my, my dad says, Look, <clears throat> your mom fell in the bathtub. She broke her hip. She's in the ER. Uh, she's going to be fine. They say it happens all the time. Don't worry about it. She'll be home in a couple of days. And I'm like, Really? Are you sure? He goes, yeah, they say it happens all the time. Well, I'm just telling you, nothing could have been further from the truth. She was living that die young at an old age life. She had no arthritis, no diabetes, none of the problems that all my aunts and uncles had. She worked out five days a week. I called her Nana Schwarzenegger. My whole family went through an experience that I now know is epidemic. What does it mean to thrive now? You said the definition of youth was active, young, right? Mentally active, physically active. That's thriving, right? And if we thrive now, then we're living our life in the moment. And the people that you work with, folks, as we age, we go through a lot of challenges. How can we thrive based no matter what we're facing? Do any of you know people that when they get in pain, become injured, and they're fearful, who become angry. Have you ever met anybody like that? I know you have. Well, that was my mom, okay? She was no longer Nana Schwarzenegger. In fact, she was not even Nana anymore. And so we put my mom in a nursing home. My mom lasted exactly three months. She hated it. She begged my dad three times every day, get me out of here. We were living... And the medical studies are now making it pretty clear that we are genetically engineered to live for a certain length of time, our bodies are engineered to live. Anybody know? I'm going to take some guesses as to how long our bodies are engineered to survive and live. It's 113 years. 113 years. So why isn't our life expectancy 113 years? It's because of what we do to our bodies. Now, tens of thousands of years ago, the life expectancy may have been 15 or 20 years. Why? Not because we weren't genetically engineered to live to be 113. We froze to death. We got eaten by saber-toothed tigers. You know, we just didn't have control of our environment to the point that we could actually fulfill that potential. But right this passion. And one of those was Mr. Art Linkletter. Any of you know who Art Linkletter is? Quality of life. I mean, think, I, if I even know what a golf course is at 120, much less the rest of that, the vision there is I'm, I'm living vibrantly, right? That's healthy. I don't mind being 120 if I can even think about things like that. But your perceptions, your perception of what it means to be 100 or 70 or 90 or 80 is what forms that opinion that, a ca that caused you to raise your hand whether you want to live to be 100 or not. And if it's a perception, what separates us from all other living creatures on this earth? Love? I don't know, I got a dog that I, I, I really think he loves me. I, you know, I don't know if he, I don't know how deep it is, but uh, yeah, I think he loves me. We have the ability to decide who we love. We have the ability to define what I'm looking for in another person and a relationship for me to say, this is my definition of love. So you're right. Okay? But it's the ability to decide, to apply judgment, to think for ourselves. We're not pre-programmed. We actually are the only living creatures that have control over our environment. We decide what we're going to do, right? And Mr. Linklater would say, if you don't feel safe, you're not safe. And that's one of the biggest issues we face in this country right now. So there's say something secrets. to you now. My dad, he's, young, he's turning 93. He's my poster child, right? I test things on him. <laughs> hadn't, hadn't killed him yet. There was a couple pretty close, but I test things on him. He's an open book. He's tell me what to do. I'll try it. I'll do it. He didn't start out that way, but he's that way now. Secret. The human body is an amazing, amazing organism. And we can heal and correct far more 
than we give it credit for being able to do. This and I found out that two million Americans fall and injure themselves in their bathtub every year. 20,000 people like my mom die from that. This bound and gag cartoon ran seven years ago. If you're a humorist and you're going to make a cartoon script, what's going to be the subject matter that you use? In order to be humorous, it's got again, again, people reading it have to relate to it, right? Seven years ago, were we talking about bathtub injuries? Did you see apply this to you? If I say, do you know anyone that's fallen and hurt themselves? Eight out of ten people are going to come up with one, two, three, my aunt, my uncle, my mother, my brother, my neighbor. We're going to know somebody who did that. Well, the main thing that's going on in the public right now in terms of our consumers, your constituencies, is a high level of denial. One of the reasons this is epidemic, I can write a cartoon about it and everybody relates to it, but they don't talk about it. My mom did not come to us and say, I, I'm struggling to get in the tub. This is difficult for me. She Ignorance is the other thing. We simply did not know. We did not have the knowledge to make my mom safe. And we need to respect what we don't know. The fact of the matter is, as we age, we become less stable, we get weaker, our skin thins, our connective tissues deteriorate. Fact of life. Can't change it. I'm thinking about why our life, what's our life expectancy now? 77, 78, 79 depends. You know, it's changing so rapidly. 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day. These numbers are just going to continue to skyrocket. It's about 79. Does anybody know what the life expectancy was at the turn of the century? And I mean, about it. we have tripled our life expectancy in 200 years. We are going to double that again to our maximum capability. We're going to wear our bodies out. Okay, we will make it to 113 years if we use our brain, give our God-given ability that separates us from the other animals to make decisions that empower us to thrive. When I say eat right, I'm since the dawn of human life, for the first time ever in human history, my children have a shorter life expectancy than I do. First time ever. Why? Because of the choices we're making. I'm 60, okay? At age 55, do you know how many prescription medications the average American is taking? Water? Do we have healthy water in this country? Now what is chlorine? Does anybody know? Why is it in our drinking water? It kills living organisms. Hello? <laughs> what are we? I don't know about you, but I, you know, I'm a living organism, and I kind of want to stay that way. How do you do our that? But the bottom line is, exercise is the way that our body cleanses itself of those toxins, those impurities that we put in our body. If I can engage my lymphatic system, and that's what it means to sweat, Right? That's what he's really getting at, is if I sweat, I've stimulated my lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system requires movement to function properly. We have to move our body so that it flows. And that's why a sweat a day really is a pearl of wisdom. If I can just get my heart rate up, if I can move, but if I can temperature appropriate, not a hot tub, not a jacuzzi, a process, and there's my dad, my post, this was a test, he survived. That's not boiling water, by the way. And that's not a look of fear. <laughs> it does kind of have a look of fear. Uh, but whole body non-aggressive massage. Uh, it's very powerful. Very powerful. Stress and what we're doing to our bodies is epidemic. And we were not engineered to function this way. Our brains were not designed to thrive in the environment that we have created in our world today, we are moving very, very fast. Are we not? And we are going to continue to move fast. So if we don't learn and master these secrets, and we don't teach them to our children, we don't demonstrate them to the and people. I all know. I mean, I all know. I all know. All of me knows. All, all four of me. There may be five of me now. I don't know, but... We all know that there are people that have a huge range of
capabilities. When they come today, in today, it's stimulus. No response. Stimulus. No response. I mean, I got flipped off twice going to work the other day. Twice. I'm going, is it me? <laughs> I mean, I don't think I did any. What? I don't get it. But these people are stressed. Any of you have? What, what are we doing with kids when we put them in front of computers, games, TV? Sir Nye what we said, doing? he's not going to live long. Do you know what the li li average life expectancy is after one spouse passes for the other spouse? Any guesses? You think you got problems. Wow. <laughs> Laughter is the strongest medicine to overcome stress. Humor, being happy, having fun. About, now remember, my dad's turning 93. My mom passed 10 years ago. And he calls me about six months ago and he says, uh, I'm, uh, I'm dating. I went, what? <laughs> well, I, it's not serious. I'm going, what? Dad, you're dating someone? That's so cool. And he goes, well, well, well we, we were just having fun. <laughs> and I'm like, well, Dad, you're 92 years old. I mean, what else should you be thinking about but having fun? And I said, hey, Dad, uh, so you and Gracie have been dating for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. I said, uh, do we need to have the talk? <laughs> and he goes, we are talking. And I said, no, 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 you know, the talk? He goes, the talk? I said, yeah, the one you never had with me? And he's like, well, I'm not sure I follow you. And I'm like, about safety? And he goes, oh, I wear my seatbelt. I always wear my seatbelt. I, I learned that lesson. I'm going like, Phew. okay, Dad, never mind. He's not getting it. If we feel better, we do more. Now, look, I want you to watch this, okay? My mom... Nana Schwarzenegger, right? Riding high. She was up here. She hurt herself. Zoop. Dead in a nursing home. One year. Bam. Just like that. Once she hurt herself, couldn't stop it. My dad, after my mom died, here, depressed, drinking, in pain, nothing to live for. Zoop. <laughs> He's turning 93. He's ha I talked to him last night. Oh my God. I mean, he's just, he's just an amazing man. He's having fun. He's happy. He's enjoying life. And so Part this is the image. Now listen to this. This is the image that my father wants his grandchildren to hold in their minds of him after he is gone. Are you ready for this? Can you imagine how stoic this is going to be? Now, I watch my kids, they go around for hours trying to get their lower lip up over their nose. And I, you know, dad's not going to tell them anything, and I'm not going to tell them. And finally, I have to say, you know, it helps a lot if you don't have any teeth. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> they're just tugging on their lip trying to get it done. But this is what it's all about. That's my father at 93 years old doing his hydrotherapies. And here's the message for you. The message for you is this. How do you create your own passion? How do you develop and harvest your own purpose so that you're very clear? Every day I pray or meditate, however you want to say it, that I can help my children and my spouse and my family and my friends to discover and honor and embrace their purpose and passion in this life, whatever that is. Thank you.